Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, Brandon Santino back for another week. Um, just wanted to hop on and tell you guys, get a hold of the Discord. Um, this is going to be an awesome week. We have, uh, as usual, we have Bare Knuckle in Florida. I mean, you know, we're talking about million-dollar weeks. It was a Bare Knuckle Florida card, and it's all the usual suspects. Uh, we have LFA coming up. We have USC back until April. Um, this is the, the best time. I know it was slow for a while. We only had a few cards the last few months, uh, and tough cards at that. Um, but man, I'm excited to see what's coming up and, and the world of boxing. So, uh, don't forget, hop on the, uh, the Patreon, the discord, go sign up and, uh, and join us. It's going to be a great few months. Yeah. It's only 25 bucks a month and you get every card and we've got threads on everything imaginable. And there's a lot of people on there smarter than us on NASCAR and basketball and baseball and football and the Super Bowl is coming up. Uh, so there's going to be some bets, bets to be made. Uh, so definitely come sign up on the discord and we'll see you guys there. Um, before we get into this week's UFC card, speaking of the Super Bowl, do you are you are you a football fan? Have you been watching all this nonsense? Uh, I used to like football a lot. I am not good at betting it, so thus I don't watch it. <laughs> if you can't bet it, what's the point of it? Yeah, what's the point? I love football. I love watching it with my kids. Done fantasy, you know. I just that's my kids and I watch football. That's what we do, you know, as a family. My whole family. And like watching the Bucks lose, because when Brady went down, we followed Brady to the Bucks. I love the Bucks. Um, watching the Bucks lose was hard, but we kind of assumed that that would happen. Watching Kansas City in another Super Bowl pains me. Why? I don't get it. Here's the thing I don't get it either, because I actually like Mahomes. I think he's a good quarterback. I like his personality. I, I don't find him annoying as a human. I like Travis Kelsey. I like the Kelsey Swift thing. I like Andy Reid as a coach. I like all of them individually. There's no re they have a good team. That I, everything is good. The Chiefs are great. I hate watching them collectively as a team, and I am always rooting against them no matter who they're playing. See, they remind me of the Warriors, like in basketball, when they just went every single year. But it's like you look at Steph Curry, like he's just the like. How do you hate Steph Curry? Yeah. Like he's unhateable. LeBron, you know, oh he he cries too much on fouls, but like Steph is just like. Such a chill OG. Yeah. You're like, man, he's trapped by his toxic wife, and he's still fighting the good fight. Like, what a good dude. And you're still going to root against him. It didn't make any sense to me. No, and that's how I am with the Chiefs. There's no rhyme or reason. I, with the Niners game, I've always liked the Niners. E even as a kid, I was, you know, I n was never my favorite team, but I liked them. But I kind of wanted the Lions to win just because it's been. With your shirt right now, you look forever. like you're a Niners fan. <laughs> you look like San, Fra San Francisco <laughs> representing. the house. Um, but I like Detroit. I wanted to see them win, and they've never won anything in life. And they they were doing great, and then they got murdered. And now, I, and I didn't really care who won. I mean, I, I whatever. I just want whoever won that game to beat the Chiefs. And so I hope the Niners beat the Chiefs. I think we had this. Didn't we have a Niners Chiefs recently a few years ago? I think so. I don't know. Um, yeah, because the last time I watched football, the Lions were like 0 and 16. That was the last time I cared yeah, about football. That was probably the first year Dan Campbell coached them. Oh, it was like shit. like that. And then now he's he's in the playoffs, won the NFC division. It was it was really fun. But uh, football is almost over. I don't know what I'm going to spend my Sundays on after that. French boxing. It's French boxing. There's there's always that. Fury Sundays. Fury, Fury Sundays. Fury Sundays are coming up. Um, but we got a card coming up. Last week's card was brutal. That was, was insane. Canada card? The Canada card. Not last week, week before. Week before that. Yeah. All seven male Canadian fighters lost, which on the card before that, all five of them won. In, in this one, though, I thought I thought judging was weird. I thought Katana won that fight. I thought Saidi won that fight. Um, and I'm shocked to see the hometown people lose like that. Malak at, you know, TKO. I, I kind of was watching the Katona fight and I, I liked Katona. Um, but I, I, you know, I think on the podcast, I even said, this is going to be probably a close fight. Like Armfield is really good. Um, watching the fight live, I was like, dude, I think Armfield's up two yeah. rounds to zero. Really? But then I'm looking at the live lines and it was like Katona was minus 300. And I'm like, yeah, hmm. I don't know where they're going. To, I, I think I actually said on the podcast, so I said, I think this is going to be a very close fight. Wouldn't be surprised to see it a split decision. I'm just surprised to see Katana in his homeland be on the other side of it. I think that's see, that's the big struggle. So a couple of things. One, um, 
the judges are independent judges. So it's not like they're Canadian judges. Like, Oh no, no, we need to, the only time that it really impacts it is, is honestly it's with the crowd, right? The crowd. That's exactly what crowd it is. cheering, the, the crowd cheers can impact the judge. Yep. Like, Oh man, that jab landed harder than the 15 punch combo that landed. Right. So that's where it impacts it. But really the judging is independent. Yeah. The referees are independent. Like they're all hired by the UFC. They travel commission, to but commission. the judges also know who the UFC wants to win. And if the judges are, constantly going against who the UFC wants to win, they're not going to be flown to Canada and to Ireland and to Abu Dhabi and be put up in these nice hotels. And I've known a few girls flown to Abu Dhabi. Oh, what were they judging? Just with what's, hmm? um, so like the judges know who the UFC wants to win and it's okay for an outlier every once in a while. Not like it's okay, but like you see it, but to see them go against the A side, the whole card threw me off. So I've kind of pivoted a little bit. So I've been getting my ass beat on the UFC, but making it back on boxing. And it's just such a contrast. The, uh, the Canadian MMA fighters, the males went 0 and 7. And then you have, uh, the Canadian boxers dominant, crazy. And they're so good. Like, uh, Christian and Billy, uh, Arthur better Did you see that fight? No, I didn't. Oh, Jesus Christ. They is unbelievable. He's the best boxer in the world. He's crazy. Um, just different. It's crazy. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I, I that card, this one isn't, I, I like a few spots on this card. This one's, there's kind of, uh, quite a few close fights as well. Um, but I do, I definitely like some spots on this card better than I did the last card. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on the card as a whole coming up? It's fine. I think me personally, I, I'm going to focus mostly on like the bare knuckle this week, fury this week. Um, what else is there? Uh, there's road to UFC this week. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff that, that we have. Um, and then boxing. Oh yeah. my God. My favorite boxers are all fighting this week. Who's that? First of all, I think I have a thing for black men. Probably like Peyton Talbot was at fight ready today. <laughs> Oh man, did I tell you the story about how he just looked at me and was like, hey, like the last time I saw him. Did he say anything to you today? Yeah, he was actually nice today. He was like, oh hey, yeah, he was actually nice and normal. He recognized you? Yeah, he actually saw me as I was leaving and like kind of gave me one of those. Could we get him on the podcast? I don't know. Does he speak? Oh yeah, he speaks. Oh okay, I don't. I've never heard him. He, he seems super quiet. He. I remember he went Instagram live with somebody one time. Some random guy, like he didn't know. And then everyone in the comments just kept calling him Zesty, and he was like, "I'm not Zesty, like like crazy." But it would be awesome to have him <laughs> on the funny. podcast. I, I need to start getting more fighters on the podcast. You guys, you might have. Who should we get? Who is with us now on the podcast before we start pulling in? Outsiders. I mean, he, he would be awesome on the podcast. No, but I mean, guys who train yeah. with us regularly. While he's here, we'll see if we can get him on. We always get a lot of requests for JSP. Do we? The problem is I don't think anybody could understand him. We'll subtitle it. Okay. <laughs> I can barely understand him. <laughs> Funniest thing with JSP is I understand the actual words he's saying. He bundles these words up into like these allegories that I don't understand. And I'm like, what are you saying? And then he'll break them down. And he's like, like, a, like, I, I don't know, you're talking about jabbing somebody. And he's like, no, give me a, a good jab. And he's like, like that tree in the woods. I'm like, wait, what? Like, I don't, I, huh? That's and how people like, in Tennessee give directions. Yeah. And I, I'm like, he's like, you know, like that little stick tree in the woods, just wiry and sticks out and pokes you. I'm like, well, when he put it like that, yeah, that actually it makes, makes sense. perfect sense. Yeah, but like, but he has all of these weird JSP Tennesseeisms, and I don't get them. And then I think about him, and I'm like, that actually made more sense. He might actually be smarter than me. I just don't get where he's going with these things. So it'll take you a minute to get what he's saying, and then you're like, okay, that's actually pretty clever. But um, I've been in the same room with him for many, many years. He has never said a word to me. And just in general, he looks pissed off. Like someone just like farted next to him. He's like, oh, and then we start, he just starts talking to me the other day. Like we had known each other for years, forever, like yeah. forever. He's like, how you doing, man? How's your family? How's everybody? And I'm like, I'm like, do you, do you know me actually? Or are you confusing me for someone? And then we actually started drilling together and it was just like, I'm going to go for the double leg. Yeah. He was such a nice guy. He, the he just. Yeah, and then, yeah, okay, so JSP, um, g- give us in the comments, you guys, who you would want to see on the podcast. I have mine. Who and, do you have? And it might never happen, or if it does happen, it will be the last podcast ever. Uh, Corrales. We have to get Henry Corrales. Someday, he's my wish list, my dream. I 
want, I've asked Henry to come on and he's actually explicitly said no. I know. That's why it would be my dream. Um, we all want what we can't have. <laughs> we've asked him and he has said no. He's like, dude, no, I can't say the stuff that comes out of my mouth. He's like, I say it here, but I don't have a hot mic. Can I, t- <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. Can I tell you my dream podcast would be uh, me in the middle. Peyton Talbot. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Peyton Talbot on the left and Peyton Talbot on the right. <laughs> right. So it'd be me in the middle and then it would be uh, Tony Kelly and Henry Corrales. Oh, man. And just mix it up. And just and honestly talk fire not, them off. not about fighting, no, but no, no. current events. Current events. <laughs> I think Tony might know current events. Corrales, I don't know if he knows what news is. But that's why it'd be more funny. You it just would. hear like the, the LA gangster take of... Man, hearing him talk, some of the stuff, like Corrales is one of the funniest humans I've ever met, and he's one of the craziest humans I've ever met. Um, okay, but you guys in the comments, you know, if you guys know the fighters we train, or I don't know, even if we don't train them, we could probably get our hands on them. Um, oh, I'd like to get my hands on Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let us know. And then now let's get into this card. There's actually one of the cards coming, or one of the fights, second fight. Maderos and Quinones, I can't wait to get to for nothing more than the lines. Those are strange. Um, okay, okay. They moved quite a bit. But let's get into this one. We have Thomas Peterson against Jamal Pogues. Uh, that is a 265 pound heavyweight show opener. Go. I texted my friend about this uh, a few weeks ago when Pogues was plus 210. I'm looking at this like, man, this does not seem right to me. Um, Thomas is fine. Thomas is fine. He had that nice little uh, contract in the LFA where they gave him a can every few months and he just came in and knocked him out really quick. He had one really tough fight with Waldo and Waldo just went life or death with a, you know, a, a grandpa. Um, I like Pogues in this spot. He's so like Pogues is the guy that has all the skills in the world and is just kind of lazy and dumb and just won't put it together and, and do it when he needs to do it. But the guy's a jiu-jitsu black belt. When he wants to wrestle, he can wrestle. He's ultra athletic and he's got a great jab. I mean, the dude, the dude striking is really clean and educated. Like even on his contender series, he was getting tagged a few times, but he was just trying to like, it was like, he's trying to prove a point. Like, I'll eat 100 leg kicks just to show you how good my jab is. And you could watch the way that he pulled and fired back. I love everything about Jamal Pogue's skill-wise. Now, IQ-wise, tough. Um, but it looks like he's actually taking it seriously. He's lost a lot of the, the big belly, the, the big gut. And honestly, I, I just feel like uh, Thomas shoots two, three takedowns, doesn't get it because Pogues is explosive and does move really well. And legitimately knows how to wrestle. He, he knows how to wrestle. And I know Thomas is whatever, whatever, whatever. But you, you look at the room that Thomas is in, um, in geez, Montana or Wisconsin or wherever this is, uh, it's not the same room that Jamal is in and it's not a high level enough room in MMA. Uh, I think to beat Jamal Pogues, I like Jamal Pogues. I liked him at plus two ten. you know, the line has come in a lot. I, I really regret, I didn't, you know, put everything on it, but I, I, uh, I like Pogues here. Yeah. I think he's down plus plus one forty now. So the line has gone down quite a bit. I did a thing, uh, last week, actually, if you guys were on the Patreon, you would have gotten a breakdown of this last week when he was at plus 185 when I said I like Pogues. Um, but yet you, you said everything. He does all of the right stuff. He used to be a middleweight, uh, and then now, of course, he's a heavyweight. But his scrambling and his abilities at middleweight was really good, and his technical abilities were good. And, of course, you know, you put on some weight, you are where you are. But, yeah, he's got a good jab. He's athletic. He does all the right stuff. The last fight, you guys, was in London. And I... Uh, the UFC flies us out on Tuesday of fight week. So he probably either left our t- time on Tuesday and then got there Tuesday night, or he might've left Monday and then gotten there Tuesday, depending on how everything, you know, the time transfers and stuff, but he wasn't there long enough to deal with the like time change. And that is a thing. So you see guys flying overseas. A lot of times they look flat. I fought overseas. I fought in Russia. I didn't even know what planet I was in. You, you're just, it's hard to wake up. It's hard to go to bed. That'd be I terrifying to wake up in Russia. So I can understand why yeah. you didn't get what I planet. woke up in Russia and was like, Oh shit. Um, but yeah, I like pokes here. I like over one and a half. I like over probably two and a half as well. I think it's probably going to end up going you know, probably a a decision type of thing. Yeah. It's like minus two twenty five on the, on the over round and a half. That's what the line is set at. I actually don't know because uh, a lot of Thomas's fights have been really, really short. And if he can't get, uh, pogues down, 
God, but the whole thing is. But Pogues isn't a finisher. Pogues but he, will play. But he could be a finisher. Yeah. That's what's so annoying about him is I feel like he could finish most of these guys. And then, okay, not to get a little bit racial here. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, uh, in the comments, Listen, they I, I love, call you racist. I love black men more than anything. <laughs> That's like my flavor. That's my time. thing. But black boxing is so annoying because, and in general, like most of these black boxers are so much better than these people and will drag shit cans to decisions because they want to show like, I can never get hit and I'm going to jab you from every single angle instead of just putting the finish on it. And Pogues is like the same way. He'll, he'll pull and move and jab you and just never put the finish when he easily could, easily could. And it's frustrating for me, but I, I like Pogues. Yeah. Uh, next up, Markel Medeiros and Landon Quinones. Is Medeiros, I actually want to check. Medeiros 8-1. and one. Was he a contender kid? Yeah, okay. Um, contender, I knew. And then Landon Quinones... He actually stepped up. Uh, he was on the Ultimate Fighter, stepped up last minute against Nasrat Hackparast. You always say Nasrat. Nasrat. There's no P in what his is name. What is it? Nasrat. Nasrat Hack Hackparast. That is too strange of a name for say me. Say it to, five times. Nas, Nasrat. 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 Nas, Nasrat Hackparast. Nasrat. That sounds like a. I mean, rat. It's like you Nasrat. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just weird. All right. So has is there a P in Hasparast? Hackparast. Fuck. Jesus Christ. Um, Anyway, Landon Quinones fought that guy, and he actually looked good. Last minute fight against him, he's solid. Um, Quinones is actually really, he's actually good. He does a lot of the right stuff. Um, fires good punches on the inside. Good body work. He likes to get in there, and mix it up. Elbows off the break. It's hard to see what his cardio is because he took a last minute fight and but he looked took a lot fine. Of it did, but it's. And that it was looked a high fine, but he fight. definitely faded. So it's hard to tell. Was that standard, or was he training for something, or what? Like, but, but he 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 looked good. Um, on the other side of that, we have Medeiros, who's actually very similar, kind of in the well-roundedness style. Medeiros is a guy who's at Factory X, kind of uh, from the start. Growing, so he up. will jump guillotine. 100%. So he will always jump guillotine, and he will switch stances a thousand times. And he does the hands thing. He flares them and he switches stances and he goes. But he he actually, of the X Factory guys, I feel like he does it almost the most fluidly. And it seems very effortless, maybe just because he grew up training that way. And that's how he learned versus trying to transition that way. Uh, but he actually does a, a really good job of it. Good long, hard punches on the outside. Good low kicks, of course, from both stances. And then we've seen his last couple of fights, he'll shoot. He sh shoots and actually he bundles the legs really well versus a lot of the guys from Factory X who will shoot. But then if they don't get that takedown immediately, they don't know how to cage wrestle and how to rebundle the legs. But he does a really good job of that. Um, top pressure is good. Control is good. I assume his cardio is good. We've seen him go a little bit. Uh, it's, um, it's okay. He, he pushes through it. Um, but there's been times, definitely, if he was facing better competition, it would be a lot more concerning. Yeah. I I like him winning round one. I think he's probably going to lose round three. And then it's round two. Who does more and better to kind of seal the deal? Um, he's going to win on the outside, his footwork and his movement. And I think Quinones is going to win on the inside, clinching bodywork type stuff. I lean Medeiros here, but I think this is a toss-up. I think this is a really close fight. I think over one and a half, over two and a half is is the play here. It's probably going to go to a decision. I lean Medeiros for nothing more than he's young and he's up and coming. And you generally see those guys have just a little bit more fight and hate and piss and vinegar in the moments and the exchanges. So I kind of lean him here. Wouldn't shock me to see Quinones get the win though. Yeah, I, I think this is going to end up like... <clears throat> uh i've been on him for a long time and medeiros medeiros yeah, yeah. i i've been bet i probably i'm probably like the most world-renowned markel medeiros better of all time like i i've been betting him since early 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 in his career fury and lfa and all that stuff i don't know if he's fine coffee you got me is dripping everywhere it's been dripping everywhere Just everywhere I mean, everyone down here slams their brakes. Uh, by the way, I do want to say this. Co uh, coffee Bean is probably one of the greatest places on earth. The coffee itself or the place? But everything. Okay. I, I mean, it's just, it's like such a safe place. Like, it, it's just, I, I feel warm. Really? I feel real warm. 
I always feel warm anytime I'm out and about. If I'm in a city and I don't know the city and I see a Whole Foods, I know nothing bad is going to happen to me in the proximity of a you Whole don't, Foods. You're not concerned that you're a, a Trump, a Trumper in the uh, yeah, land Trump. of... <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get jumped by a bunch of uh, hippies. <laughs> but I feel like if you see a Whole Foods anywhere, you know that you can leave your kids in your car with the windows up and nothing bad will happen. Okay. All right. Well, I feel that at a coffee bean, like, like, you know, yeah, I just love coffee bean. There's just, everyone's so nice there. All right. I'll take Peyton to coffee bean. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. I, no, I, I honestly agree with your breakdown for me. The, the craziest part, I think Markel is, is the best guy out of, uh, factory X in a long, long, long time, just on the physicals. I mean, the guy, I think he's a pretty freak athlete. Like he, he just can do everything. Well, here's my one problem with Markel. He is so talented as a striker. I just don't think he has the faith in his striking, which is really weird because he pulls well and he's got all the mechanics. But then if it's standing for too long, then he's like, all right, sh shit, I got to shoot. And he'll shoot. And, you know, the, the Michael Murphy fight was a really bad fight. And I, I say that because Michael Murphy just fought, what, a few weeks ago? And he lost to Lowen Tynus yeah. or whatever. And that dude has the worst style for MMA ever. Like just take you down, not really throw any punches and sit on top. And he won 30, 27. Markel was in a lot of like precarious positions in that fight. And he would be like winning on the feet and looking so good. And then just all of a sudden feel like uncomfortable and panic and shoot. And I, I hated that look for him. And Kinona seems like uh, kind of the new age of MMA. Like, okay, if I get taken down, I'm going to stand back up high volume. I keep everything in front of me. Like, I love everything about his game, but on the physicals, I really like Markel. And one thing I want to try to avoid this year is because, you know, we, we look so hard to try to find a way to fade these guys that we think are, uh, you know, they're the touted prospect and the up and coming talent. And then we look back and we're like, Hey, that one thing on tape, I didn't like, I remember for years, I went on and on about Taporia's Zalal fight. And I was like, man, he looks so tired in that fight. And now Taporia looks amazing, never gets tired. And he's about to fight Volkanovsky. And I'm like, shit, he's probably going to win. You got to take it at face value. Take it at you face value. It. So that Michael Murphy fight might not have been a great look, but I think on, uh, like literally, like you said, younger, just like he is the guy. And we're going to look back at this fight in five years and be like, Dude, that was the most insane value of all time on on Mar Markel. Uh, even though I do think it's going to be weirdly a really really close fight. I think it's going to be very very close. I just think Markel's. I think the real difference is going to be they don't start in the clinch. They don't start tired, and he's going to be moving laterally and in and out and have those long punches more times than Quinones is going to be pressing on the inside, swinging for the fences and getting ugly. And I think there's going to be enough moments uh, where Markel is looking good and scrambling and he'll fight if it does get closer to these bad positions. And I think those little moments in that athleticism early is going to win it. And then I think the range is going to win it later. Honestly, too, and this is, this is something, honestly, boxing has helped me with MMA a lot, right? Because, uh, you know, we, we were talking earlier about A sides and B sides and for B side, the win, you just said, you made the analogy. They have a better chance of getting hit by lightning than beating the A side most times, right? In boxing, in boxing. So then it comes down to two things. It's, it's, well, it, it's either the favorites going to win by decision or by knockout. Right. And then within that, you know, for me, it's like, okay, well, how does the opponent fight? How does the favorite fight? And we just talked, I just talked about black boxers, right? Black boxers are so content to just sit on the outside and show you like, look, you'll never touch me and I'll touch you as much as I want to, but I'm not going to go for the kill. Cause I'm just going to jab the shit out of you. When then there's a lot of people that are like, like Mexican fighters are like, no, 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 I'm going to stay in your face. I'm going to wear you down and overwhelm you with a million punches. And then I'll finish you round eight. And it's like repetitive and learning that style. So you watch Nasrat Hakparas, how he fights. He's always in your face with this high guard, swinging a million punches at you. And that's how he wears guys down. Well, that, that style is good for Landon to show like, okay, well, I can match that too. I'll stay in the pocket with you and we're just going to trade, you know, these short punches and we'll just volume each other. But Markel is a lot on the outside and seeing things and picking his shots. So the fight I think is going to look a lot different. And then, uh, I, I mean, I like the physicality. I like the, I, I like Markel. He's got a yeah. swag about him be interesting to see his career progress because I think I, th I think the contender ruins a lot of fighters they get there too early they're not ready but he's I actually, been ready yeah I think he's actually ready he's been ready for a long time and that was like a picture that guy he was an underdog in that fight that was like a picture perfect fight yeah. for him a Russian with no striking that's gonna get like that yeah. was just a picture perfect fight 
All right, next up, we have my favorite crazy woman, Julia Stoliarenko and Luana Carolina. Jeez. All right. Um, you know, on first glance at this fight, right, much was made about uh, Julia moving down. First of all, the biggest hater on the planet Earth is Casey O'Neill. Like, she's the number one hater of everybody really? on Earth. When, uh, when Yulia couldn't make weight, uh, remember she like passed out oh, on the she scale passed out, yeah. and then Casey got on uh, X or Twitter, or whatever, and was like, and now this girl is going to fight 125. This is crazy. And she's just a big hater. I'll just laugh at that. Don't shit. hate. Don't hate. Don't hate. Um, and then she cut the weight and she looked great, right? She'd been adding cardio to her regimen, got the weight off naturally. And she looked great and ended up arm barring Molly McCann. Now this fight, I think is going to be a lot different. Um, Originally looking at it, I was like, dude, Stoli Renko's going to kill her. I think very low of Luana Carolina because she can't punch. She has no wrestling, no jiu-jitsu. She's just kind of a horrible fighter. And then I actually like deep dived a little bit this morning. And now I think I like Luana. Really? Yeah, I think I like Luana. Okay. Why? Because she's lanky and she's awkward. And she has <laughs> flashes of Anderson Silva sometimes where she just like pulls and throws these like random shots and they're, they're really funky, really creative. But then in the last fight, right, she fought that girl, Ivana Petrovich, the Aries girl that they were really trying to push. And Ivana, first of all, Ivana can't wrestle, but neither really can Stolia Ranko. She's kind of like, just like a bulldog. I'm going to try to power you over, but she doesn't have a lot of actual technique where I think Ivana Petrovich is a little bit the opposite where she has no bulldog in her, but oh, I'm going to try to hit this and hit that and nothing worked. Um, Lana was cool on the ground. She was like, whatever, like whatever you want to do, I'm, I'm good with it. You know, try your heel hooks, try this, try that. And she looked fine. But then when they got back up on the feet, it was, uh, it was open season, right? She's swinging on her, throwing knees, elbows, punches. She was filling the space with so much. And in the past, we'd seen Stoli slow down lots because everything she does is so aggro and so crazy. I wish we had another round in that Molly McCann fight to see how she looked from round one to round two. Does this weight cut help her or does it hurt her cardio? I, I think generally it's going to help. It's going to help for the most part. For the most part. Sometimes it, it ruins yeah. people's cardio. Um, I just think that like... Everyone's going to get trapped on Yulia, you know, recency bias, but Luana's weird and funky and fills that space. And she stopped all of Lupi Godin. And I know it's a huge size difference, yep. but Lupi's a much better wrestler yeah. than infinitely uh, better than, than, uh, Stoli Renko. Um, I, I think Stoli never sets anything up with her hands. Like she doesn't really have a process on the feet. It's kind of swing wild punches until she gets close enough and then try to grab a hold of you. And if she can't get that arm bar, you know who she is? Uh, female Andre Muniz. Yeah. No, she really is. Yeah. Yep. Female Andre Muniz. Or like a Paul Craig almost. Like I, I think more Muniz literally because of the arm bar. Really? And then like look at Muniz's last few fights, right? He doesn't get the arm bar and then he gets mounted and the shit beat out of him. Well, what happened when she fought Chelsea Chandler? She gets the mount, goes for the arm bar, doesn't yeah, get it. Yeah, but Chelsea Chandler is a different animal. Like she Come on. is a horse of a human. Is she? She was running away she, in that I, last fight. No, but like on top with that weight. And didn't uh, Stoliarenko take that? Like, didn't Chelsea even miss weight on that? Wasn't it? Uh, yeah, like probably. She don't give a, she's 209. She don't give a shit. Yeah. But either way, she got to the mount, dominant position, swings for an armbar, loses it, and then gets TKO 30 seconds later. You know what I mean? I, I just feel like she's uh, female Andre Muniz. Uh, I like the comparison. I thought about it all I... night long. <laughs> <laughs> In between my rancid thoughts of Peyton Talbot, I was like, man, she's like Andre Muniz. I, uh... I, I still see, I don't think Luana is smart enough to avoid the scramble. Because she's from Brazil, you freaking racist. I know. I'm always doing this. I'm always doing it. Um, I think she could stop the weird scramble and the submission stuff. But I think if she's on the bottom, she's going to feel okay there. She's going to go, oh, no, I'm all right here. I'm good here until it's too late. Or... Stoli Why does she even have to worry, though? Stoli's going to just go for an arm bar and fall to her back. Well, she might even go for, like, a hip toss, scramble, dumb thing, and they end up both on a knee, and Luana tries to push her over and get on top instead of – in ends up in a triangle or arm bar instead of just bailing out and going. I, I, I see just a dumb scramble and a submission in Julia's future because I just don't think Luana is a good enough grappler to know – when to just bail and when to go. And I, I think some of these scramble positions are going to be created. And I think she's going to try to win instead of trying to exit. Um, 
I liked in that last fight that girl Petrovic was trying to go for a lot of stuff. And Luana, I, I love this look. This is my favorite part in fights. Um, what was it in the Nate Maynes fight when he fought the uh, uh, Mateus Mendonca and uh-huh. he's going for the leg locks? And they just look at them like, boom, boom, <laughs> boom. And she did it like five times going for leg locks. She's like, all right. Going for it, yeah. Leg locks, but Julia's not a leg locker. She's an upper body arm bar triangle, yeah. scramble up on top. Thing. No, I understand. I don't have a ton worse. of faith in either of these two fighters um, because I don't think either of them are make good decisions. They're all like the bad decision. Well, they're fighting humans. in a cage for yeah. entertainment. I mean, come I on. Uh, I'm going Stoli. Submission. I mean, yeah. was there ever a surprise? Yeah. You no. found Stoli I'm could always. fight Godzilla and you'd be like, oh, I think she's going to arm bar her. Always. Uh, Blake Builder, John Young, Lee. Man, Builder has so much skill and does really? so much stuff really well and just doesn't know how to put it together. Um, his one, I, I like his boxing coach, the Flaming Hot Mitts. Do, do you follow that guy? No, Instagram? I should. It's, uh, no, he actually does good drills it's actually good boxing and he's jim in california um you see builder builder does a lot of instagram stuff too and this stuff is solid he moves laterally well when he times takedowns in the open he can time them get you up and go his shots aren't bad but once you hit the fence he doesn't know how to re-wrestle like he just doesn't know how to bundle it and collect it and go um and he's got that weird Frankie Edgar style, moving laterally, shifting his shoulders, but he doesn't attack. He doesn't know how to attack from that. He just moves laterally. Are you playing oh, footsies with I'm me? I'm trying to. It's this I'm pink shirt, to. and you're showing, I know. you're showing a little crevasse got, with the chest hair and the necklace. Here, let me zip that up a yeah, I mean, it's a little like weird. You don't need to see my chest And you're touching my, touching my foot. Touching your foot. I've got alligators. And what's this over here? A flamingo. <laughs> Come on. I was, like was going to say it. some crazy stuff. Um, Anyways. So Builder moves. He's got that square shiftiness stance. I mean, Frankie just got into um, the Hall of Fame. So is that what you're trying to say? Is that Builder's the Hall of Fame? Builder's going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's it. If you move like Frankie Edgar or Dominic Cruz, you're, you're, you're bound to go to the Hall of Fame. It was written. It was written. But he, the thing that he does is he shifts left and right, and then he'll stop, and then he punches. And then as soon as he stops, people see that, oh, he's planted, so they don't engage and move away. And when he's trying to go forward and do that, he doesn't work behind anything. He just like is inching forward and he's super square and he just runs into punches and he doesn't handle leg kicks well, which Lee doesn't kick a lot anyway, but um, he does have good jujitsu, good top game jujitsu. He just doesn't have the best wrestling to get it there. He's super athletic, super dynamic. He just doesn't know how he's going to win. He has all these skills, all of these tools, and he just doesn't know what to do with it. And then Lee on the other side is not, not amazing, like good boxer, good striker. I like, he goes for the kill, but he knows how he's going to win. There's just no mistake about that. He's going to try to kill you. The, his last fight against a kid with a leopard head. First of all, that kid's chain wrestling was really, really good. I think I was one of the first guys to bet him, uh, Z, Yazi. And first of all, fuck that. He won that fight. He he won that fight. Like all three rounds, I think he freaking won that fight Two at. Two at the least. So you know what's funny about that? Just I'll, I'll just talk about it really quick. So Yazi or Zia, whatever. I, I don't know how to like say it, but um, he was a huge underdog in the first road to USC fight, and he had almost no film on him. There was nothing you could really? watch about him. And he has like 30 fights. How does he have no film? Yeah, there's no film. And then I remember watching like one thing, and I just saw the way that he chained and got this guy's back and choked him out, and I was like, oh, no, this guy's a dog. This dude can wrestle. And then I asked uh, Hey Lee. I asked our resident uh, Chinese Mongolian. Mongolian. Yeah. Mongolian. Um, and he goes, no, yeah, that guy's he's, he's legit. His MMA wrestling and his chaining, uh, out in the open and in MMA was really amazing. Honestly, that guy is an amazing fighter because then he gets up and he's really not even tired and his striking is like good. You mean Lee or Z? Or Z. Which, okay. Yeah, yeah, Z. Both of them. He, he'll wrestle a hundred times, and like most times, you'd be like, "All right, well, now the tide's yep. gonna turn." Like he's tired, and he's like, "No, I'm still game. I'm still here." Like yep. he's good. And to that, to a testament of how good Z's wrestling was, and how beautiful that entire like grappling fight was, Lee handled it all, scooted to the cage, got up, and won a fight. Yep. And because of that, I, I mean, I gotta go, Lee. I think his his 
defensive grappling is great. His cardio, the pace of that fight was through the roof. And I, I thought he, I mean, of course he slowed down, but they went balls out and he swings and his had great moments has really good moments. I just see him having the more fuck you. I actually want to win this fight moments versus like, Hey, I'm in here and whatever you give me, I'm going to take moments that builder is going to do. Um, I like builder. I like his skill set. I, I don't think he's going to win this fight. I, I don't think he's going to win this fight at all. It, it, it's funny. It wasn't that long ago that Builder was brought in as a B-side every single time. He took a long time off, wasn't fighting, and then he came back to CFFC and was brought in as a B-side and somehow won that fight. And then, uh, what is it, Reginaldo Carvalho? Yeah. Put him on death's door like three different times, and he came back to win that fight. Right? Finally, And then he was last-minute replacement down in. Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. Shane Young. Shane Young. But, well, then he fought on Contender Series, and they brought him in to lose to the guy on Contender Series. That was a tri-star guy with great boxing. Mm -hmm. And then he finds that standing back take. Um, you know what's funny is our old producer, Cole, used to train with Blake. Oh, you're right. Yeah. And the problem that I have with Blake is the problem that I have with most LA fighters, and I think you're seeing a lot of people move, is their training is so fractured. One day, boxing. Next day, or I'm sorry, next session, wrestling. Next session, jiu-jitsu. And none of these coaches can figure out a way to just blend it all together. And there's not one place where you just do it all. It's funny that you say that because the somebody asked me about the Bolanos fight. She asked us about the Bolanos fight, um, Gaston. Yeah. We broke that down and we both said if Marcus McGee wrestles, easy fight. But we both said we think that Marcus would beat him in a stand-up fight in the cage in an yeah. MMA fight. And he did. And we got to ask, like, why do we think that this and this and that yada, yada. We're like, it's not kickboxing. This isn't, it takes two people to stand there and agree to be at that distance because if I'm moving in and out and you're not, well, it doesn't work. And that's the thing with builder and with these boxers. Like I said, I like his boxing coach. Boxing is phenomenal. Pure boxing, go to a pure boxing gym and learn pure boxing but you need a lot of MMA rounds to cover the distance because you don't stand there to the way that boxers stand there. I've been training, uh, you know, the last few weeks, my hamstring was torn, so I couldn't wrestle and I couldn't kick. So all I can do is box. Right. And so I'm trying to really get the, you know, the, the shoulder, the, um, the, the shoulder roll and, and trying to box. People are just kicking the shit out of my legs and there's nothing I can do about it because I don't have the explosion to, to pop off. I'm angled. Right. So I'm not getting hit, but my leg is just, it, it's, it's two different sports. I mean, best example that I, I would give two examples. My favorite fight of all time is Lando Venata versus Mike Grundy. That was like the, to me, the best display of MMA ever because you put them on an open mat and you have Grundy wrestle Venata. It's not a close fight. Right at all close. but Venata just everything he does wrist control moving the head uh limp legging out re-wrestling refight like he, it was an amazing fight and then uh one close to home is Grant Dawson and uh Mark Madsen I mean mm -hmm. one guy was an Olympian and the other guy's like whatever he's from wherever you know and it was a huge grappling difference this is MMA yeah it's so different silver medalist in the Olympics getting out wrestled by a kid that I don't believe placed in Missouri State Wrestling crazy championships. and that's just the it's way nuts. that it goes yeah so yeah i like um, what fight are we on oh lee. Bill, okay lee builder um yeah so we we're saying the training is just fractured it's just a little bit different and uh honestly from what i've heard um just around la like he doesn't win a lot of rounds in any of the 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 sets and not in sparring like i i don't believe in blake builder i think he had one good two good performances um, against shane young Who's cut. one of his better ones. Yeah, exactly. Who is not a world beater. And if they ran back that contender series fight, I think Blake loses that fight nine out of 10 times. He got really lucky with that little swing to the back and, and choke and his jiu-jitsu is fine. I, I think that was just a really, really uh, fortunate ending for him. And I, I like this Lee kid. I, I liked his striking before dude's dynamic. I like him a lot. All right. Next up, we've got Themba Garimbo. Um, I just wanted to roll an R. It makes me sound a little... He's African. You don't yeah. roll R's in Africa. I know. I know. Um, Pete Rodriguez, who you got? Petey boy. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They watch the podcast. Of course they do. Well, if you're watching, and we, we know that you are. No, I, I got Garimbo on this one. Why? Um, Pete's got dynamite in his hands. Uh, I mean, he hits hard. I think he struggles to make the weight. Uh, well, he was going to fight at 55, couldn't make the weight. They were going to cut him. 
he got a last minute fight. Now he was Thumbo. Who is Thumbo supposed to fight? Kiefer Crosby. Kiefer so what Crosby. is that telling you? Yeah, that the UFC they like this Thumbo guy. And what's so funny is Thumbo's pre UFC tape was horrible. But you know what's funny is that guy that he fought in Fury. When I, I made this huge case, like man, he couldn't finish this old ass guy. That old ass guy fought Julius Holmes for five rounds, and Julius is a good boxer and hits hard as hell. He couldn't finish that guy either. So what is that saying? It's like, okay, thembo has got a different style. First of all, it's a lot of wrestling and stuff like that. Um, I kind of thought about this. First of all, Themba seems like he's on some new supplements. He's at MMA Masters down in Florida. We yeah. know Florida. Yeah, know I mean, it's in to. the water there or something like that. So he seemed like he got some new supplements. The dude never gets tired all of a sudden. Um, his striking's good. He's athletic. He moves really well. Last time was the best we've ever seen him look. I mean, he looked incredible. Um, I, uh, you know, you have a full-time tattoo artist, part-time fighter versus a guy that the rock just bought a house for. Um, I mean, do, do the math and the lines minus two thirty-five. If you're playing Pete, you know, just bank on an, a knockout, but I don't think he's putting together a full 15 minute. And Pete is like, he's short. Like he's, he's a probably good, five, eight. No, that's tall. Like, that's super tall. Um, <laughs> come on that's the hall come on yeah, who even gets the basketball players are five eight yeah there's basketball players <laughs> on five eight you know no I, he's short and he was this right at 170 yeah that's crazy yeah i mean thembo for me all the way i can't believe the line has dropped as low as it did i thought it was going to keep going up 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 i'm curious about this because although we do know pete and we've seen him fight there's like three minutes total of pete's like all first fight round tape. knockouts in 40 yeah. seconds and so, I mean, he fought Mike Jackson, who never should have been in the – how did Mike Jackson get to the UFC? Like, I don't get how he was there or why he was there. He was probably the single worst fighter to ever fight under the UFC banner. He wasn't that bad. I will go out on my – he boxed the shit out of uh, CM Punk. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so Pete Rodriguez – He's got good hands, he goes to the body well. And honestly, he's been at the lab for like a year or more, maybe a year or two. I would assume that he's going to be tough enough and have the wherewithal to get back up and do stuff well. Um, I, I could see him finding the chin of Themba at some point. Maybe. That said, like he's definitely the B-side here. The UFC knows what they're doing, trying to send him to him on shortish notice, maybe three weeks. Um, I think I, you know, I, I think Themba probably wins it, but I would not be surprised to see a, a chin get clipped of, of Themba. I just don't know enough of Pete on the tape to really know how is this cardio? How, how is he going to handle getting taken down? Does he get back up? I re there's so many unknowns of Pete Rodriguez. What we know is that he's got good power, fast hands. We haven't seen him fight long or hard or do really much. So I'm really uneducated on Pete, and I, I assume that he's going to be ready just from being at the lab. Um, but but I also assume that, you know, short notice fight for them, but the guy they're trying to push is... Is the MMA is the lab becoming the funniest name for a gym in all of the sport? What is that? <laughs> all right, let's move on. Uh, you have, <laughs> never mind. You have five rounds and you throw more strike. Never mind. Never mind. Hmm? It's just the funniest name. Yeah. Um... Charles Johnson as that Maxim. Am I, am I? I think I've gone first every time. I'll go uh, first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Charles Johnson is Blake Builder. No, come on. He's don't, 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 don't. He don't. has all the skills and never goes and imposes his own fight. He just sits back and does all of the stuff and hopes it plays out for him. And it doesn't until people get tired and he starts putting it on. And this time it's different. This time it's different. Um, Maxim, man, I, I like Maxim. He does well. Like that was my favorite magazine his, as a kid. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that magazine. He does all the right stuff except for checking leg kicks. He's got pretty good cardio. I like his hands. Uh, yeah. His hands. Uh, Tyson Nam stuffed out all of his takedowns. But he's got good takedown defense, and he's tough, and he's in your face, and he's got good power. Tyson Nam is actually kind of scary for a 25-er. Like, and Tyson Nam always has this weird, like, almost grin, like the troll face. Like, he's, like, mid-fight, like, sideways smiling at you, and you're like, dude, what are you smiling at? Like, like do you know something I don't know? He's like, I'm not left-handed. You know, it's you got just a like, secret. What, yeah, what's going on? Um, anyway, so I thought he did really well against Nam, 
who's a good power puncher who does a lot of stuff. He also tried to shoot, got nowhere with his entrances. They were bad. And then had to strike and looked really good. His stiff, long punches. And when he would throw the, his ones and twos were fine. When he would throw three or four or five punches, they looked good. And they were landing. Wasn't checking leg kicks at all. Got dumped on his face a few times. Um, when he did get a body lock, he was launching them and had good control. I, I, I like him. I like him. I like him. Johnson, man, I, the guy's so good. He just loses fights because he doesn't. The last guy he fought, um, Estevim, what was his name? Um, yeah, Rafael Estevim. Rafael Estevim. I mean, got mauled for the first two rounds, outlasted, and then just like put it on Estevim for the last round. But I was like, that was heavy shots for a yeah. team fiver. Yeah. Where the fuck was that round one and two? Go let it out. He doesn't. It's like we're talking about with some of these boxers. They're in there trying to play with their food. And then next thing you know, it's the last round. Johnson is good enough to not get submitted, to get back up when he gets taken down. He does so much stuff well. If he would just go take that shit, he would drain them faster and he would land these punches, but he doesn't. He sits back and he gets on his bike and he tries to move laterally and he tries to kick. It's like, God, the only way I see him winning this fight is he does land some low kicks. And if um, Maxim is dumped on his face a little bit and he throws a low kick and follows with a knee, catches him off balance. Um, that is very specific. No, yeah, I know, because he dumps him a few times. Because Johnson throws a, a good amount of knees up the middle, but low kick to a knee, get him off balance. If I was his coach, I'd be drilling that nonstop. Um, Soccer kicks. Yeah. Oops. Other than that, I just don't know that I can trust Johnson to – win a fight uh, so i'm gonna make a case for johnson okay make the case so here, here's one common denominator um as a grappler uh like myself and i think i have a kind of a similar style to maybe like a cody durden like i, I like mm -hmm. to press forward and grapple yep. and then mix it with jiu-jitsu every guy that he's fought so far that has beat him clear out is forward crazy pressure relentless wrestling pace and jiu-jitsu cody durden like a purple belt but like when Cody Durden becomes a brown belt, he's going to get worse. Yeah. No, I agree. Do you understand? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like the his crazy wild scrambles are what make him good. And the second he stops doing that, it's going to make life easier for his opponents. Yeah. Yeah. And just relentless and, and gave it all out. And Estevan, same thing. Estevan, honestly, that was really surprising. Doesn't have the wrestling, but his judo was excellent. He kept hitting hip tosses. And I think Charles was like, what the hell are you doing? Um, really surprising, but then had the jujitsu to complement it. And the one thing is all of those guys are crazy. Didn't Maxim hit pressure. a hip toss on? It was a lateral drop. It was beautiful. Was it? Okay. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, but the thing is, I think Maxim's probably the best fighter out of all of them that he's fought. Um, just from technique and skill. I think he's the best fighter out of all of them that he's fought, but he's patient. That's, that's, I think the big difference is he's very patient. He'll sit on the outside and jab and he wants the setup to be so perfect. And I think that's why he struggled with, with Nam because Nam's like, all right, cool. We're, we're here. I see your takedown coming from a mile away because you're, you're trying to set it up and be calm on the outside and make sure it's good. And you're going to strike with me a little bit. And Charles does have a good sprawl. Like when, when you're shooting one off or God, that, that Durden fights like an outlier because he just looked horrible in that fight. Um, but like he's got a good sprawl and he's got good awareness. Like you said, he can do everything well. I really think that Maxim's not going to have a lot of luck with the takedowns. And even if he does, I don't think he has the jujitsu to compliment it. Like Charles does have a good stand up game, fights hands well. He will skirt on the outside. He's got good lateral movement. I think that's going to give Maxim trouble. And now we have a stand up fight. And Charles is five foot nine, puts a really good jab together. He's got good striking. Um, honestly, I like the dog at, uh, the huge plus money in this fight. I think this is a really good buy low spot for Charles Johnson. My issue is, so we've got Charles Johnson. He's got the Zalgas win, which is, I thought Zalgas won that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Again, another crazy forward pressure yep. guy. Jimmy Flick. And we all know Jimmy Flick is if you, he can't submit you immediately. Fine. You're pulling okay. guard. We're there. That's it. Those are his wins. Um, the Mokev decision. Again, another forward, crazy yep, pressure guy. But And then we have Odie Osborne, Cody Durden, Rafael Estevam. He just doesn't know how to win fights. And that is the difference is that, same as Blake Builder, is he's so good, he does all of the right stuff. But when it matters and everything is tied up and close, 
a guy like Maxim is going to swing and find that one shot in the opening and the this and the that, whereas Charles Johnson is not. And I, I think that's literally the difference here is technique. People over emphasize technique a lot. And sometimes we- A lot. That's been the craziest part. Yeah. And we talk about Brian Ortega all the time as a guy that's losing fights but knows how to win. And that is the Maxim fight. It's like, I think if this is a boring, slow fight, I think Maxim's going to beat him with a jab. I think if they decide to throw two punches at a time, he beats him at a one, two. I think that he will find a way to win because he's 17 and 0. And that's what people who are 17 and 0 do is they find a way to win in these little moments that like they could win every single fight by split decision, but they will find a way to win. Whereas a guy like Charles Johnson is going to be very competitive in all of his fights, but he will be the guy losing the split decision because he doesn't know how to win in those little moments. And that's why Charles Johnson is 13 and six and why Estevam is 17 and Oh, um, Johnson is losing decision, split decision, decision, decision. Um, I, I think it is a guy and he's coming in kind of short notice as well. He's got three or four weeks on it, but look at his Instagram. He's traveling from place to place to place learning, but not dogging it out and being ready to fight. So uh, I, I like um, Maxim here. All right. Well, we're going to be on opposites. Uh, Molly McCann, Diana Belbitza. Go. This is an interesting one. Actually, I'm going to go first because you know I didn't watch tape on this. Oh, okay. I am so low on Belbitza's, like, physicality. And I just think Molly... Can you show... Wait, wait. Uh, oh. Who's the ghost? Uh, ghost, whatever. <laughs> Can you show the punches one more time? Let me do it. Let me, do, let me show the Belbitza, okay? So I'm going to put my swimming cap on. I'm going to get in the pool. <laughs> Classic. And swim my way to victory. And I think, uh, I think Molly is just physical and swings and is, I don't know, just a better fighter. So that's all I have on that. Did you, did you know they fought already? Nope. And it was kind of a close fight. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you recommend Molly at minus 305? Nope. <laughs> oh my god um like i think this is an interesting fight i, I really it's funny you know i i think that uh when you start dating a bare knuckle fighter it gives you a huge boost oh yeah you automatically get better I, it's funny my whole life just revolves around bare knuckle now like i made a ton of money last week on a uh, women's boxing fight, a women's knockout because the girl was bare a, knuckle or actual boxing no actual boxing, boxing gloved boxing. boxing and there was an olympian fighting a bare knuckle fighter like in boxing, a former Olympian fighting a bare knuckle boxer in boxing. First round knockout got hit one time. And she was like, nope, I'm good. Didn't come out for the second round. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> it's funny. They're a different breed of people. It's funny. Last week, uh, there was a guy I watched an interview because there was no fi fight film on him, right? Just interviews. I said, yeah, well, the reason I'm doing this is my mom killed herself four years ago. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to make her proud. So now I'm doing this. He goes, also, I overdosed twice. He goes, honestly, I do everything really good. Like when I do drugs, I really do them. When I fight, I really fight. He got knocked out with the first yeah. punch. <laughs> like when people are referencing their drug addiction and dead family members in the same breath, in the same paragraph, you neck know, tattoo. max bet opponent. Yeah. So anyways, I was just making a joke because she's dating Cameron Van Camp now. Oh, who, uh, Molly? Molly's or... gay and married. Okay, I don't know. See? Keep up. Is... Keep up. <laughs> keep this up. This is how much interest I have in this fight. Um, okay, I, I, I'll say the Carolina fight. I actually uh, was more impressed with Belbiza than I thought I was going to be. We thought Carolina was going to steamroll her, and she won the fight, and it was good, and, and she looked like she was getting tired. Um, Belbiza sticks a lot of volume and Molly had trouble kind of navigating the punches in that fight. Um, Belbita historically has had pretty bad takedown defense. I, I just don't want an opinion on this fight because Molly's got really good box. Like honestly, her boxing is like pretty solid. It's pretty traditionally clean for and like she's boxing. Got a good enough hate in her heart, spinning stuff. Like she'll just keep throwing. Like she's got, she knows how to win. Yeah. Takedowns. Honestly, I think that uh Belbiza could make this fight close. She always has a ton of volume. She's getting better. Honestly, she's training in Canada now. Um, sh she's gotten a lot better than she was before. Even having a close fight with Carolina, how Carolina's looked lately. Um, 
you know, <laughs> never mind. Uh, I, I think it's a close fight. I think Molly wins. I would never get near a Molly 305 bet. That's crazy. Okay. Um, what about a Gilbert Urbina Charles Radke? I'm a big Chuck Buffalo guy. Is that Urbina or is that Radke? That's Radke. I don't know who this is. No, I'm a big Chuck Buffalo okay. guy. Okay. Um, Radke and uh, who was the, Kosi? Yeah. Yes, Kosi. Um, both uh, fought um, Mathetha. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they both fought Mathetha, and then they're going to Urbina after their Mathetha fight. I am so hungry. We got snacks in here? What, not in here. I mean, we're in a... A shed. An undisclosed location? Uh, yeah. If you had asked me for snacks earlier, I was eating those cookies from Costco. Oh, shit. They are so good. They taste like homemade cookies. It's probably good. I'm not, I'm fat as shit. And you tried to kill me at practice this morning. What I tried, uh huh? My heart was going like, oh, blah, 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 blah. I was trying to call you out. You did call me out. You're like, if <laughs> you were like, if the person next to you isn't going hard, call them a fucking pussy. And I was like, I'm like, I can't do anything. I'm going to have a heart attack. Yeah. And that was the only one. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say it. It was already said. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, man, I, I like Urbina. He does everything well. His punches aren't amazing. Like, uh, not his punches, his stand-up. Isn't like overly gorgeous or like patterned, these wild feints and setups and stuff. Um, but he's effective. He's there. He's down to fight. He's tough. He does good stuff. I also like his offensive wrestling. I think he does a really good job um, chain wrestling, getting people down. He times his takedowns well. And his top game is mean. Like he gets on top of you and he's going to beat you up. Uh, Rad Key is a guy that I look at as, as cozy. I, I, I really look at them kind of the same. I think his striking is fine. I think his, his Rad Key's a tough guy and he's tough and he's generally well conditioned, but I don't know that he's overly good anywhere. Really? Yeah. I, I think his wrestling is okay in the traditional wrestling sense. I think his wrestling in a cage is Blake Builderish. I think it's, if, if he times it well, he gets it. If he doesn't and you go to the cage, I don't think his secondary movements and his ability to chain off of the cage are good enough to really do stuff. I think he looks the part of a striker better than he actually is as a striker. Um, and I, I think, okay, he's doing the right stuff here and there. Uh, Urbina is 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, he's a tall sip of water. Radke's like 5'9"-ish. 5'10 tops. Super tall as well, yeah. Very, very tall. And I, I just think that range and that length, and I, I really, unless unless Urbina just death gasses, I don't know that I see a way for Radke to win. Um, Urbina's going distance with Sean Brady and looking really good against, um, who'd he fight in the battle? Battle before he death gassed in that. Um, man, I, I like Urbina here. I like him a lot. I think this is a tough one. I actually, I'm opposite of you. I've been on Radke forever and ever and ever. I've always loved the guy. Um, you know, I had some friends that used to train with him. He got wobbled and rocked against whatever his name is. Uh... That dude's a world champion kickboxer seven times over. Him and Diana Belbitza have revolutionized kickboxing. <laughs> and swimming. And swimming. Air swimming. Well, actually, he wouldn't revolutionize swimming. He's blind. Okay. Anyways. Ah. And it's not Martin Luther King Day anymore, but... It is almost Black History Month. Oh, there you go. I love Black History. Um, I like Radke. I, Radke's a jiu-jitsu black belt. From all accounts, his jiu-jitsu is phenomenal. And I think it is. You've seen it in fights. His jiu-jitsu really is good. Um, I think he looks the part of a striker. He is the part of a striker. Great left hooks. I, I think he's just a good fighter in general. Um, and then he went to Thailand. Do you think he did steroids in Thailand? Does everyone do steroids in Thailand? Isn't that what you do? <laughs> in Thailand? Go to Thailand. <laughs> when in Rome. Uh yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly, I worry about Radke gassing more than Urbina gassing. Weirdly, yeah, no, like I, his so, muscles get heavy. Yeah, like he he almost looks like he tries so hard that he gasses himself out. Yeah, I, honestly, I think this fight's going to come down to whoever has better cardio. For me, this fight's going to be a pass. Um, I, I really don't even want to make a pick on this fight. Right. Yeah, I like Urbina here, so okay, I, I ain't right. scared, homie. 
Um, all right. Next up, we've got Kizriev and Muradov. Mahmud Muradov and Aliaskabab. Aliaskab. Kizriev. Um, do you have thoughts on this? Um, honestly, we don't know enough. We just don't know enough. Yeah. So about Kizriev, because he's only gone to a decision, I believe, once. He looked really good in that decision. His cardio did. There was that, but that was at 170, and that was like 30 years ago. Yeah. He's fought once in four years. And he fought the corpse of... Uh, of Dennis Tallulah, yeah. who actually... Did some good stuff. That fight fucked me up for a long time because it made me go like, I think Dennis could win this fight, like several different occasions. I remember talking about that and going, no, Kizriev's winning this fight. We're good here. But what? No, not that fight. But I remember like uh, when Tolul and oh, his yes, fight after fought, that. Yes. Like, look, he defended yes. takedowns well. Yes. Um, the thing that worried me in that fight is that Tolulin was a corpse and was landing straight rights, like 10 of them. And he's like a foot shorter than Mahmed. Yes. And so... Kizrev has a he has a really good chin though, and he's we haven't seen him get rocked. And at 170, when he fought um, Entomoto or Enanobo or whatever his name was, and you know at 170 before he moved up, before the 30 year layoff, that was a three round fight, and that was a pace man. Kizrev looked like a motor in that. Was that Russian water working for him or what? Who knows? But he looked great. Then he takes time off, goes up in weight class, beat Tolulin. And honestly, in the second round, Tolulin was stopping a shot and doing, uh, you know, some good stuff. Then you have Muradov on the other side, who's good. He has a great jab. Tall He's sip got of water, can wrestle. Tall sip of water. His wrestling has gotten good. His defensive wrestling is good. Everything. He looks good. Um... And then, but then you look at uh, Muradov in the Kyle Bahalo fight, and he's getting taken down. And so it leads me to believe that Kizriev is take is going to be taking him down. But then, how is Kizriev's like cardio after? I mean, just he just doesn't fight. We don't know. That's the thing. Yeah, there's just there's so been many a lot unknowns. of narratives that like, oh, his cardio is so bad. But it's like, how do we know? We don't. Yeah, I and things change in a few years. Yeah, I. I I mean, Muradov, the thing with Muradov is he just does get tired. He just gets tired. Yeah. But a lot of that tiredness is him swinging for the fences, trying to knock people out. Well, I don't know. I say that, but then he's really not knocking people cold. Like, he no, doesn't have this, like, death touch power. Swings big, but doesn't knock yes. people out. And you know what else gets you really fucking tired is uh, some some Russian bear who's got your legs bundled just punching you and you're like trying to yeah. like, get up and survive. I want to say Kizriev wins this. Um, and, and, and there's a big height discrepancy on this as well. Kizriev yeah. is 5'9", 5'10", and Muradov 6'2", 6'3". Which in the striking will be big, but in the wrestling, I, it's almost like not going to help. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to help. Um, but yeah, so I lean Kizriev just because, look, he gets takedowns. I think his cardio is going to be good enough, whereas Muradov, we've seen fade. Um, but if Kizrev's cardio fades out, then cardio almost doesn't matter because if you have a two tired people and you've got one of them is five inches taller, he's going to be able to jab the other guy on the outside and just kind of move a little bit. So Show knees and just move, yeah. Yeah, I, I think Kizrev here, I don't have a lot of faith just because of the unknowns. But everybody's on Muradov this week. I think I'm going to join you on the Kizriev side. Like we just don't know. And then we've seen all those ATT guys just come out and look amazing. Is Kizriev at ATT? I think. I See, I was trying to figure that out. And I, I saw uh, on his Instagram, he's got one picture where he's got one a pair of shorts that I thought had an ATT sign on them. But everything else is like Eagles MMA and old. I, I just didn't Even see anything. Better. So it, yeah, I, honestly, if he's at ATT or at Eagles, I, I think it's good. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of unknowns. I don't really know. I, I think Kizriev, but uh, that's where I'm at. All right. All right. Vivian Arujo, Natalia Silva. Don't show my girlfriend this clip. She wasn't the first Brazilian to take my heart. Go on. No, I, I think, uh, I, I mean, there's a clear A side here. And you can say the line is wide, and that's fine, and I would believe you. Um, 
Natalia is really good. She really she is. is really good. She's really good. She's got great hips, great bounce. She's got a great fight IQ. Um, and Vivi is good. If this was a few years ago, maybe I'm making a case. And actually, I said this a long time ago. Um, I think that uh, a Gabriela Fernandez, uh, that's that big Brazilian chick. That's a, a southpaw. She fought Jasmine Jazdavicious. Okay, yes. Gabriela Fernandez versus Natalia Silva is a very, 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 very close fight because Natalia doesn't offensively wrestle. Now you're talking about a stand-up fight, and that girl kicks hard as shit. She's got great hands and great boxing. And Vivi is a good boxer as well, but she fades out a lot in fights, and I think she's going to have trouble tracking down Natalia Silva. Um, and then if she tries to wrestle, she's going to wear herself out too because Natalia just sees things so well. The problem is Natalia is very small. She... She's a tweener if I've ever yeah. seen one because she's very small for the weight class, but she's too big for the 15ers. Um, I, I think she's going to win here. I, I mean, the UFC knows who their star is and they know who's the one on the, on the way out. Um, I, I don't know. You want to make a case for, you know, is this too wide of a line? It is this or that. Or So I have a case to make, and I don't know that it sways me from going against Natalia, but there's a, absolutely a case. And it's the, because she don't paint her toenails. Yeah, exactly. So Ugh. we're done here. Um, no, the last, uh, who did Vivian fight last? Um, Maya. Yes. Jennifer Maya. That was impressive. Cause the thing with Jennifer Maya is that Maya doesn't throw first. She is so good at moving laterally and pulling you in and you throw and she pulls and she counters you with three punches. And Arujo didn't do that. She waited and waited and waited and fainted and moved away. And she got Maya to throw first, and then she countered her, which was amazing. And then we've never mentioned this before on the podcast. MMA guru? MMA guru. And just like MMA guru, Jennifer Maya's big old hips. (laughs) We've never talked about this before. But those things are... I mean, that's a wall. Would you say they're childbearing? <laughs> they are childbearing. And most women hit those hips and they fall. They cannot do anything with them. But Vivian Arujo is not most women. And, She's a freak athlete. She and really she, is. The thing, and this is really interesting, is she shot in on those big childbearing hips and she got takedowns off of them. And then on top, she was a force. Yeah. Um, she really is like a perfect fighter. If you think about it, she's one of the better boxers in the UFC jujitsu black belt. And she was, wasn't she on like the national team for wrestling? Like, Oh, was she? she, I didn't know that. She's a sick MMA fighter. If she was 10 years younger, they'd be pushing her in this spot. Yeah. And she punches like a man. She Um, might be, has anyone done a cock check? (laughs) (laughs) I knew you were going to say a sex check of gender. You just weren't expecting the C word. Just, yeah, I wasn't expecting it to come out like that. I was like, all right. She got um, gauges, like yeah. everything. <laughs> um, but she, and she's 37. And, and the thing with Natalia, and so I went back and I watched the, and I, I don't watch a lot of women's MMA tape, you guys. I've never mentioned that before, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I don't watch a lot of women's MMA tape. Okay, okay. But for this one, I did. And I went back and I watched the jazz fight with Natalia to see like how, because Jasmine, she does a good job of body lock and lifting, getting takedowns. She made Jasmine look like a scrub, and then Jasmine's look like a real force the yeah. last few fights. But the thing with Jasmine is Jasmine goes body lock, and Natalia defended all of that stuff really well, whereas Vivian is going to shoot doubles on Legs. the cage. And yeah. so I, so those are the things that – And Blada got her down, and Vivi's a much better threat on the feet. Yes, exactly. And, and jiu-jitsu. And so if Vivi just pulls and, like – is patient on the outside. I could see her winning on the counters where Natalia is used to countering. And then the takedowns, if she is on her legs, man, she's going to get some takedowns. And so I see, I, I mean, honestly, I think the way for Natalia to win this fight is of course the lateral movements and then the kicks. Yeah. And so then it just depends on like, do you expect Arujo to get knocked out? Which I don't. She's got a good chin. So then yeah. it's just like volume. And so, I, honestly, and then does Arujo get tired like she did in the, um, who'd she fight two fights ago? Uh, Brazil. A- Andrea Lee? No. No. Um, Amanda Hebas. Oh, she yeah. got really tired in that fight. 
from all of the wrestling. He best forced the wrestling right off the bat. And that was a, a really good game plan right there uh, in Arujo death gas. But in that, um, her last fight against Maya, she did not death gas and she looked good and she did all of the right stuff. So, I, man, I see a world where Vivian can win. You know, I, I expect Natalia to be able to move and to touch and to move and into touch uh, enough to win. But man, I, I'm not. Yeah, I wouldn't. Trust I said it. I would make a case, and I made the case. That's a good I case. still think now. I, I still think Silva wins. Um, but man, Vivi is a force. She yeah, really is, she a, is force. a force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, uh, Randy Brown, Muslim Salikov. Um, I think Salikov, nineteen and four, man. How is this dude? Old bastard. Old son of a bitch won't die. Um, he's 39. He's 5'11. He's as Russian as they get. He just lost to another old son of a bitch, Nicholas Dalby, who just wouldn't die. Um, man, he beat Andre Fialo, but at this point, who hasn't? Come on. Why you got to bring up old shit? And I love Fialo. Fuck. Why wouldn't he just live? Um, then you have 17 and five Randy Brown on the other side of that. Um, I think Salikov has met his match. Yeah. I, I think his, like, Randy Brown does a lot of good stuff. He doesn't do shit with kicks, but Salikov doesn't throw a lot of calf kicks. He waits on the outside and he wants to throw that big overhand. Um, he'll throw head kicks and he can actually wrestle. He's a good wrestler. He's a good wrestler, but the thing with the wrestling Tires him. Old boy gets sleepy. Yeah. And he's just ready for a nap after about two minutes of wrestling. So then if he stays on the outside with tall ass Randy Brown. He's going to get jabbed to death. He's going to get jabbed. And and then if he presses the inside on Randy Brown, he's going to get tired. And I, I don't think we're going to see like a Jack Dela situation, fighting the inside, body working it, coming over the top like we, we saw with Brown. And Brown is good, man. He's really good. He's, he's a really educated fighter. Uh, he, he's got good punches, long range. He has good jujitsu. I, I like Randy Brown. I, I, I like him. I think he does all the right stuff. I don't know that he finishes Salikov. Um, and if he does, I think it's in the third round. Um, I like Randy Brown here. I, I think old man Salikov is, is finally going to be on the backside of, of, I think he's on the slide of his career. And, and I think Randy Brown could um, start to move up a little bit. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I really like Sally, yeah, but I think Salikov is good. I have nothing else to add. I'm, I'm on Randy. Yeah. Um, man, then we got Moicano and Drew Dober. This is a wild one to me. It's a fun fight. This is going to be a fun. This is going to be fight of the night. What's fun about this fight? Just these two guys are going to throw down. Um, oh, okay. No, I mean, I think on a, just a fan-friendly fight – these guys are both down to fight. They you have like so? families and careers and shit, and then that's what you want to see? I want to see somebody die. Well, watch Bare Knuckle. Give me your thoughts on this first. Um, I like Moicano, I like Moicano here. The dude is, a, again, another tall sip of water. Um, Dober is a good, really good fighter, but if there's any flaw that he has, it's like getting taken down, and then he exposes his back, and he kind of like... His grappling isn't the best. And Moicano took the beating of a lifetime against uh, RDA yeah. and hung in there. Like, didn't, no, not only didn't quit on himself, but like... Kept trying to win. He kept trying to win, yeah. which is insane. And uh, could Dober do that? Absolutely. And I think Dober's got great cardio. He's a really good, just dependable MMA fighter. I really see big body, uh, big body money Moicano jabbing the shit out of him, low kicking him, and then uh, taking him down and then choking his little ass. You know, uh, Dober's last. You can't count on one guy to just keep getting knockout time, 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 time again. Can so you? Dober lost to Makachev submission, Benny Dariush submission, Oliver Aubin Mercier submission, and Efri, Efren Escadero submission. So four out of he his lost th- to Effie by submission. Four out of his last six losses are by submission. That was a long time ago. It was like 20 years ago he fought Efren. Moicano's last four UFC wins are rear naked choke wins. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Slow down. I'm doing the math. Okay. Carry the one. Okay. And okay, so knockout by Moicano. 100%. Okay. <laughs> so this, Dober's last few wins are 
he draws people into a into a brawls and Ricky Glenn. I mean, that doesn't even count. That doesn't even count. So we're 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 done there. Bobby Green, honestly, Dober fought the best fight against Bobby Green that I've seen. He forced him to fight him in the pocket versus letting him stay outside and do the. And he was getting picked apart until then too. Yep, he was. Uh, Rafael Alves, complete ape of a human, and just went in there swinging. Terrence McKinney, ape of a human. Alex Hernandez couldn't get the takedown, and Alex Hernandez is the version now is much better than the version who fought um, Drew Dober back then. Yeah, and he beat Nasrat. Na- Nasrat, fuck. Um, anyway. I really like Drew Dober. I actually think his takedown defense and fight IQ are good. Um, I, I think they're solid. His cardio is good. The thing with Dober is he's short and he doesn't really do a good job of like winning a decision. He just forces a firefight and then he hits hard as shit and he's got a head the size of a planet and he's hard to knock out. The other side of that, Moicano is actually does not have a great chin. No. Um, and when he does get tested, I, I think that's the way to beat Moicano is, is that, um, but he's Dober's so small that money Moicano, he just is so long and hangs yeah. on people and drags them. He doesn't well, re- wrestle traditionally, but even his stand up, he's got a good jab. He yeah. beat cater with low kicks first. The, that was the best thing ever. Go back and watch a Moicano cater fight. He Moicano lost that first round. Yep. And then he adjusted so well into the low kicks in the transit. Like his adjustments in that fight were amazing. He finds the back. He knows how to scramble. He beat Brad Rydell in this man. Riddell like took him down in this weird scramble. Moicano limp arm came out the back, choked him out. Riddell looked bad in that. Like, I don't know what was going on with Riddell in that He's fight. He's fighting again. Like there had to be something against that. Yeah, he was like, oh, so- I didn't want to fight. Anyway, I... I, I mean, I could absolutely see Dober touching the chin and putting Moicano out. But Moicano is, first of all, I think he's a year younger than Dober, which is insane to me. Because Moicano, he's got some miles. In my head, Moicano's 64 and Dober's like 21. And I think Dober's 35 and Moicano's 33 or something along those lines. Okay, okay. And, uh, but I, I think just the educated striking of Moicano, I think Moicano's fight IQ is just so good. And I think he's clean. He just does the basics. Yep. And he's got good jiu-jitsu. And I don't know that he's going to get into a brawl with uh, Dober. And so I like Moicano. Okay. Main event, Roman Dolides in uh, Nasruddin Imovov. <laughs> Man, Roman Dolides haunts me. Like this dude is- Why, did he strike his wife ju- as well? He tried. Um, this dude, and actually, before we get into this, if you haven't signed up for the Patreon, do it. Sign up for the Patreon, sign up for the Discord. But unfollow us on YouTube. Please unsubscribe. unfollow us. Yeah. Please unsubscribe. We have too many subscribers, too many followers. Far we too don't many. need this. Um, but if you do want to actually donate to my nonprofit, there's a link in the show notes. Cause and my nonprofit is the, well. the youth. We do the youth. We need the Ninos. Um, and. Do we have somebody that you guys do not send us anything? Uh, do we have somebody that works at a coffee shop or owns a coffee shop? Will you send us some fresh beans and we'll? Oh yeah, we'll, we'll have promote your beans. We'll drink your coffee on our show. We'll flick your beans. That's all. <laughs> that's all we want is coffee. We'll work for coffee and money and yeah, and lots money. of money. Okay, all of your money. Um, Roman to leads at this point is strike his two plissies. I was just gonna say that. I yeah. always bet against him. He does all of the wrong stuff. The motherfucker just keeps winning. Like, it's just wild to me that the dude just, and honestly, since we've seen Roman Delides at the start of his UFC career to now, he's gotten better. He's done a little bit less ape shit. Um, he just, he just keeps winning, man. Like none of it's right. He just wins. The guy is tough. Fucking wins fights on a technical level. What I actually like is when he goes South Pony blast middle kicks. He goes southpaw, blast middle kicks, and then he'll get his power blast doubles. And like he is, he, he times stuff well, and he's athletic enough to get the the takedowns. It's impressive. And for as bad of as his fight IQ is, pulling guard and going for leg locks and doing the weird shit, he actually finds the knees and the punches and the strikes. Like he actually finds the stuff to win fights as much as he pulls guard and not, he doesn't really pull guard anymore, but he's just that John Allen fight was. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Just the weird stuff in the past, but Nasruddin, man, 
<clears throat> before Chris Curtis got the gift of a lifetime in that headbutt. Uh, he was winning that fight. Um, that was, I don't know that Curtis has been taken down. And Nasser Dean was like, hold my beer. Let me go show you how we wrestle. And that was impressive as shit. And Nasser Dean's got really good striking from the outside. He's got great teep kicks and knees from the outside. He times stuff well. His issue in the past is he's faded later in the rounds. But I don't know that Dolidza is the guy to like death cardio push you like that. I don't know. Are you sure? He's so aggro. I mean, well, but I don't know that he's going to be able to do it and keep that same pace with the cardio, the pressure. I think, I think your comparison to DDP was correct. And I think he's just so macho and aggro and just such a man that he just was like, ah, I'll, I'll, I'm not tired. And we'll just push through it. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, I want to like, oh, and first of all, in the Roman Deleeds fight, I think we broke down Melvin or Melvin Marvin Vittori, and I see a case for Roman winning that fight. That was kind of that was he a really close oh clear fight. Um, he beat Jack Hermanson, Phil Hawes, Kyle Dacus. Um, man, I I want to say Imavov is the better fighter, and, and I want to pick Imavov. Um, but. I mean, the world of, of Roman Deleeds, I, I just can't doubt this guy at this point. Everything in my head says I'm a Vav, but everything in my set head said the other person Roman Deleeds was fighting every time, and they said the other person Dreykus Duplessis was fighting every time, and I have to go against everything in my soul and say that I think there's somehow a way that Roman Deleeds fucking wins this fight. I hate that you're doing this on the same week that I'm going to do this too, because you know, it's funny. So I just started kind of betting on boxing far more and the people that have been betting on boxing and are, are boxing personalities on Twitter and stuff like that. They're very, uh, ah, very, uh, like, like, what do you say? High brow or how do you say? Pretentious, very pretentious about their boxers, right? Yeah. Oh, this guy and that guy. No, this guy's not that level. And I've had success because sometimes, cause I don't know boxing well enough to, uh, to, to be pretentious like that. I just watched the tape and okay, I see this guy and this guy and this is how the fight's going. And I, I'm just dumb and that's just what I see on tape. And I think sometimes we get that. I mean, geez, how much have I been like that with DDP? Uh, you know, like uh, uh, St. Denis, BSD. Really quickly, do you think DDP won or lost against Strickland? I thought he won three to really? two. Really? Yeah. I thought Strickland won three to two, but not, I don't think it was a robbery at all. I, I'm just, she just uh, it was very him. close. Yeah, um, and, and I was big on Sean there, and I just, you know, he just didn't do enough. Like, again, it's hard to win a fight when all you do is jab. I don't care yeah. if you're busting him up. DDP was throwing leg kicks into checked kicks all fight long, but he just filled the space and did something more than just jab. And I was like, ah, man, I, you know, he won the fight. Um, I, I'm just not smart enough in boxing and not pretentious enough to, like, to like think like, okay, no, this guy's levels above him. I just watched the tape. And then, you know, there's so many people that are dumb with MMA, have no idea about anything that actually has to do with the sport. They're just fans of the sport and they, they get really revved up about these hype trains. And then the hype train ends up winning and yeah. winning easily. And uh, I feel like Delize is in that same category. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson told me that Delize and, and Strickland sparred a lot and it wasn't even close. Delize just murdered him? Murdered him. Really? Oh, yeah. So, um, I, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go deletes. Yeah. I feel like, like a bit of my soul died right now. No, I like him now. I, I kind of like, like him now. Honestly, you watch his grappling. His grappling is, it, his grappling is really good. His jujitsu is and phenomenal. He's athletic as shit. Yeah. Like dynamic, explosive. If there's any, any place that you, you know, pick him apart, it's his striking because it's just like one off shots. It's these too big, big overhands. It's too big. And but. See, He's the tightening striking it up. is where I think Nasser Dean is really going to shine. Um, he's got a great jab. He's got really good footwork. He's really evasive. He's got the flying knees and stuff up the middle. It's the in the clinch off of the stuff. It's the big movements where I think Dolides is going to find big But success. fine, but I think he's so arrogant. He's just going to say, I don't care, and just back him up and keep throwing on him, push yeah. him on the fence, take him down, let him back up, beat him up again. You know, he, he can be so slick and so everything, but the threat of the takedown, the threat of the jujitsu, the cardio threat, the just aggro, I'm going to push you against the fence and just swing Do you think this you. fight goes the distance? No, I think the leads is going to sub him. Yeah, I think one way or the other, I think the fight does not go the distance. I think it's 
going to be either Nasruddin knocks the leads out or Nasruddin gets tired and gets TKO'd or something or something via cardio. Okay. All right. So, um, that's the pod guys. That's all we got for you. Another show in the books. Um, we still haven't come up with a tagline. We really do need a tagline. We really need something. All right. All right. We'll see you guys next week.